welcome back to my youtube channel Wishopedia. in today's video we're gonna discuss about myth versus reality of a student life so we're gonna talk about myth when you first go to a agent back in your country and you want to come here to Australia to study you are told that oh the moment you'll go to Australia you'll get a job straight away immediately the starting salary would be 25 to 30 dollars an hour and getting your permanent residency is so easy once you finish your studies apply for your permanent residency you'll get your permanent residency and you can have a lot of fun you can go to nightclubs you can go to beaches you can do this and you can do that this is what you are told when you go to an agent back in your country now what is the reality now the reality is that when you come here from your country and you want to find a skilled job skilled means uh, HR, uh, teacher, um, admin, you know, skill job. It can take up to one to three months to get a skill job. So what happens with students when they come here? They find it so hard to get a skill job, which they were doing back in their country, that they have no choice, but they have to end up doing Uber deliveries, Uber driving, um, cleaning and a lot of jobs where they will get very less pay but they have no choice i spoke to a student right and he told me that he's getting as low as nine dollars an hour nine dollars an hour even the kids who are the age of 14 15 when they go and work they get more than that right around that but that is a legal requirement for the kids when they go to work. But as an adult, when they work, they're exploited. Why? Because the employer they go to, they know that these students, they need work. They need money. They'll do whatever we'll ask them to do. Right? So these students have no choice. Okay? And this is, that is really, really frustrating. Why is it hard to find a job? skill job because first one that you need a resume which is relevant to the Australian standards the way we use resume here to apply is totally different way than you use in your own country it's different so your resume must be up to the standard when you apply for the job with resume you must have a cover letter which has to be up to the standard second thing is your skill what kind of skill you're applying for are there many jobs out there what is the competition you're gonna face third thing is local reference and this is the biggest thing you apply for a job you'll, before you get a face-to-face -face interview they'll ask for local reference without a local reference you cannot you'll apply for the job they'll not even look at your resume you need a local reference how can you get a local reference when you just arrived from a different country <laughs> it's hard that's why it takes time first you have to build you know your network community and all you have to get introduced to different people then you can use them as references you can use your teachers as references you know I will talk about it in detail in the next video but this is one one of the reasons why a lot of people don't get a job because they don't have local reference now second thing I'm gonna talk about expenses here right so now you know that you if you come here finding a job is not easy right but the expenses are very high if you go and rent a room if you go and live in a university village it will cost you somewhere around 160 to 200 dollars a week so you will be paying around almost 200 dollars a week in university village where you might be sharing your room or you might be sharing the same um, premises with other students if you decide to go and fi rent a room somewhere residential which you can easily find it will cost you around between 150 to 180 a week okay second thing is you have a legal requirement to attend classes 20 hours a week you have to right nowadays immigration will do a spot check on you they will ask 
the every university colleges they have a legal liability to report your attendance to immigration immigration is very strict okay so 20 hours you're going to spend in the university you are only allowed to work 20 hours during your uh, during your session when your session is going on when you have holidays you can work full time but during your session is uh, then you can only work 20 hours so you'll study 20 hours plus you can work 20 hours a week plus you have to cook your own food you have to do your own dishes you have to do your own laundry you have to do your own shopping <laughs> there is no one like back home that you will get everything served on your table no it's not like that you have to do everything by yourself okay so that's expenses now why do i emphasize that you have to st you have to study why because you are you're gonna pay if you're doing a bachelor of engineering for one unit you will pay three thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars for one unit right so there are total four units in one semester of six the semester is of six months right four units so you gonna pay around sixteen thousand dollars sixteen thousand dollars in six months for your university fee now imagine because you're focused on working earning and everything else but you didn't study it you fail in one unit you have to pay four thousand dollars so you have to make sure that you're studying as well <laughs> right 20 hours you're going attending the lectures 20 hours you're working then rest of the time you have to cook eat laundry dishes shopping plus study <laughs> right you have to study as well right then a lot of people think oh yeah we'll come to australia we'll buy a car it's so easy dude you can buy a car not a problem cars are cheap if you go and buy a used one you can go from cheap to a very very expensive one what is the problem the problem is that no matter what car you buy you have to pay registration fee and insurance so i'll give you an example i bought my car toyota camry tara i paid thirty thousand dollars for it so that was purchase price i bought it on road it cost me thirty thousand dollars but every year i'm paying eight hundred dollars in registration and twelve hundred dollars in insurance so i'm paying two thousand dollars a year that's your expense so even if you buy a car which costs you used car it will cost you three thousand four thousand dollars you still have to pay registration registration will not change it will be seven hundred eight hundred dollars depending on the uh, the power horsepower engine power right higher the horse engine power horsepower the higher the rego right so minimum you have to pay six hundred between six to, uh, starting would be around six hundred dollars plus insurance even if you get third party insurance it will still cost you 300 to 400 dollars so you're lo looking somewhere on cheapest car you still have to pay thousand dollars thousand plus dollars in registration and insurance every year plus you need a flashy phone as well right iphone 12 plus pro max <laughs> whatever iphone brings in people want the latest one right but it's gonna cost you so that's your another expense right so this after all this if you have time then you can think about enjoying i have not seen very often it's it's rare that students who come here they're enjoying as people think back home it's very hard life very tough life it's isolated life you are on your own you get sick there is no one here who will say oh let me do this for you today there is no one if you are sick bad luck stand up go cook your food eat no one is going to bring it to you you need to do your dishes you have to do your dishes no one is coming here to do the dishes for you so the life is tough but if you plan right it can be easy it's not that hard it's because when a student comes they do not understand what is required they just come here 
without doing proper research without doing without understanding the culture without understanding the people they find it so hard to be a part of to integrate right so in my next videos i'm going to tell you exactly what you can do while you're in your country what are the free courses you can do when you can get a certificate you can use it in your resume what kind of format you can use in your resume i'll show you some examples cover letter and when you arrive here how much budgeting and everything i'll explain everything in my next video so stay tuned and keep watching thank you for watching my channel have a good day